What is good guys, this is Amor94 and no, this is not a common video that you will find in my channel. Despite that, I love Godfall and I can't get enough of it. I started researching builds online and I noticed how flexible you can be in making builds in this game. You can either make a build that fits for every Valor plate or make a specific loadout for each and every Valor plate you have. This versatile build will not force you to use any specific weapons and will let you experiment on ailment synergy as well as using any weapon type you'd like. Whether it may be a fast flurry of attacks like the dual blades, or slow but deadly like the hammer. First of all, I'd like to give a massive shout out to Gamer Jay-Z. Not that guy, th 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 this guy. He's one of the most reliable if not the most reliable Godfall content creator when it comes to crafting builds for each Valor plate. Finally, take note that this is not the ultimate build for this game as this is just more of me sharing my template or guide as to how you can be creative or adaptive in making builds that fits your playstyle. But with that out of the way, here's the most versatile build for each battle play that will help you breeze through the end game. So you might think how effective or how does this build work? To start off, this simply focuses on a few things. Getting at least 50% crit chance and as high crit damage as possible. Weapon technique charge speed and damage. Weak point exploit, well, exploiting the weak point damage. Ailment application. And finally, Arkham Fury uptime. Valor plates have their own specialties where some focus on amplifying damage through ailments such as physical damage causing bleed, earth damage causing poison, water damage causing chill, fire damage causing ignite, air damage causing shock, and void damage causing curse. Either way, this build can be benefited by any weapon type and element you use. So here are the staple items. Starting with amulets, we have the Mark of the Duelist. This is a staple due to the fact that it can heal you whenever you apply a critical hit. For substitutes, you can use a Brother's Promise to summon a Spirit Warrior whenever you soul shatter an enemy. This can help in isolating some enemies and target the Spirit Warrior instead. Another good amulet is the Amulet of the Betrayer since this will help you survive and prevent near-death situations. For the charm, we have the Lion Talisman. This is solely for increasing the weapon technique uptime, but it works really well if you have high crit chance. The more you use your weapon technique, the less you get hit because iframes, bitch. Mithra Star is a great substitute if you get a similar primary role as Lion Talisman and get good rolls for the secondary. It just so happens that I have better rolls for my Lion Talisman. Need to farm more. If you're using a fire weapon, you can use the Infinity Fragment to further spread the Ignite ailment to nearby enemies whenever you defeat them. However, if you're using a poison weapon, you can use the God Beast Iker instead. This spreads the poison ailment to nearby enemies whenever you defeat one. For the first ring, I use the Eye of the Dragon since not only does this ring apply ailments when using weapon techniques, but it also gives overhealth whenever you defeat an enemy that is inflicted by an ailment. A substitute for this one can be Zwei's Embrace since it also applies overhealth but it works whenever you hit a weak point. Basically, you can use the Eye of the Dragon when you're fighting mobs and use Zwei's Embrace when fighting a boss. Or you can wear both for a higher survivability rate. The second ring is the Journeyman's Mark. This is just for increasing weapon technique damage. This can be replaced by Fiona's Ring which focuses more on weak point damage. You can also try the Dust Lord's Signet to expose weak points whenever you inflict an ailment. You can try out these rings to see for yourself as to which one is better for you. For the lifestone, I use the Archon's Tear since it basically gives more crit chance and crit damage whenever I heal. Any lifestone can replace this but this one fits my playstyle. Finally, for the banner, I use Mesa's Banner Roll which practically has the same purpose as the Archon's Tear. Feel free to replace this with anything that fits your playstyle. One extra tip. Farm for amulets and charms that have crit chance or crit damage already so it's easier to upgrade when you're already min-maxing for your stats. For the rings, farm for weapon technique damage or charge speed as well as person increase to all resistances. For the augments, let's start with the red ones. I use carnage as it increases my overall crit damage for every 20 might adjacent to it. Just make sure you put might augment beside it to further increase the crit damage you get for this augment. Another legendary augment you can use is surety. This increases the weak point damage you can inflict after you use your northern weapon technique. For the epic red augments, I use loyalty so you can activate Arcan Fury as soon as possible. Twilight Bloom for increasing weapon technique damage if there are two red augments adjacent to it. For the rare red augments, I use focus to gain more overhealth whenever I perform a critical hit. Paradise for increasing weapon technique charge speed whenever I perform another critical hit. Spark for weapon technique charge speed as well, but this is for whenever I hit a weak point. Finally, Frostfire to get more crit damage during Rampage mode. For the green ones, I use the epic augment force barrier to prevent interruptions whenever I have more than 50% overhealth. For the rare green augments, I use the lion's cry to gain more overhealth whenever I defeat an enemy. The wolf's fury to also gain overhealth whenever I parry. And finally, rift to inflict more damage for every ailment on an enemy. 
For the blue ones, I use the Epic Augment Enervation to extend my Arcane Fury uptime by 1 second whenever I defeat an enemy. For the rare blue augments, I use Divine Conduit to gain Arcane Fury charge speed whenever I get hit. And finally, Warp to freeze in place enemies whenever I heal. Skills and Ascension level aren't the big contributor to this build since it all depends on your playstyle. But for the sake of curiosity, here you go! Before we proceed to the Battle Plates, I may have not mentioned some gear and augments since it means it can be replaceable by anything. And with that, let's start with my personal build for each Valor Plate. For the Void Queen build, I obviously use Void Sight since I love using the Northern Technique. This does not only apply curse on enemies but it also does spawn a Void Sentinel every time I use it. If you're in a crowd of enemies, you can either spam your Northern Technique or wait for a weak point trigger. Either way, you'll be wrecking enemies quickly while having a high amount of overhealth. For the Bleed Master build, I use the Sword of Courage to apply more bleed to enemies nearby whenever I use a weapon technique. This is pretty straightforward. You crit almost every time so you can trigger weapon technique as many times as possible, all while you're gaining over health. For the Mega Flare build, I use Alice Kalik the Fire of Hate since I love igniting enemies of flame while not getting staggered at all due to using the weapon technique as much as I can. Once you're in Rampage mode, it's Hellfire City. The Shatter Blade build is another Valor Plate that is practically straightforward. You crit almost every time so you can trigger weapon technique as many times as possible, all while you're gaining over health. The Winter Tsunami build focuses on slowing down enemies so you can apply ailments without any issue. This specializes on applying as much damage through weapon techniques as possible while easily evading slow attacks from enemies.
The Annihilator build is probably the most damage dealing Valor Blade I have, which might show that this build is extremely compatible with Armistice. The key is to wait for a weak point and use the Hammer, Saladin technique, but other than that, it's also straightforward as Bulwark and Greyhawk. The Electric Discharge build applies as much shock damage to enemies as possible. Not only that, the Pull Arm Rear Shame helps in spreading shock status. Nothing but shocking damage. Okay, I'll stop with the puns. The overhealth king as well, getting really high overhealth with ease. This build is the same as Bulwark, Greyhawk, and Armistice, but this Valor Plate is more on survivability while dealing heavy damage. The Frailty Exploit build will change your playstyle especially if you don't utilize weak point damage that much. Same as Bulwark, Greyhawk, Armistice, and Aegisworn, it's straightforward but will be a lot more effective if you utilize the weak point damage a lot more. The crit god build is nothing but performing critical damage to every foe, for almost every time. This will then synergize with gaining overhealth easily while making sure your weapon technique charge speed is really fast. The Plague Spreader build focuses on earth damage and triggers poison damage whenever you use a weapon technique. 
Feel free to use a hammer or polearm as those two are great in massive AoE damage so you can easily spread poison to enemies. Last but definitely not the least, my favorite Vela Blade Silvermane, I have the Power of All build. This might be as straightforward as Bulwark Greyhawk Armistice, Aegis Horn, and Illumina, but the difference is that this build can have an almost infinite amount of weapon technique charge so that you can use it almost every time. On top of that, this is a lot easier to execute when you have your Arcan Fury activated. So that is it guys, I hope this video helped you out in some way since this took a while to make as I'm not really a build guide content creator but more of a reviewer of sorts. Please make sure to comment down below if you have any questions regarding each build. I know a lot of people can suggest better gear, augments and weapon synergy so feel free to put it in the comments as well. Finally let me know which of these builds you like, which help you elevate your play experience and which is your favorite Valor play. As always thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Peace!